everybody, if you freak out, it's Miss Cash. We are moving into section um, 1.4 and I'm gonna use 1.5 in these notes. So I'm kind of teaching, um, in our next little unit, we're doing 1.4, 1.5, 1.6, and half of 1.11. Um, so I've kind of broken this up in a way that makes sense to me. So today deals with, I think, all of 1.4 and half of 1.5. Um, so this first page, I'm using this partly as a review and partly as introducing new concepts. So there's this lovely table with all these different details that we're gonna cover. Um, and I was afraid that you couldn't see my graph, so I made a, a bigger version. <laughs> so hopefully that helps us see what we're talking about. One thing, okay, so first of all, what I point out to you is that I have labeled all and only. <laughs> so any, any point that I identified on this graph is either a zero extrema or an inflection point, or it could be both. Okay, so we're going to, and I'm saying that the both, both polynomials are defined on the interval negative infinity to positive infinity. So I said this in class, um, if, if it were easy for me to put arrows here, I would. And these, this pen has got to go, we need to try again. Um, so, if it were easy on Desmos for me to put arrows, I would, but that's what's kind of implied. Um, so, and I'm telling you that, that there are, I, I wrote the directions so I can kind of do what I want. Um, I'm telling you that there are no other zeros, there are no other extrema. By the way, extrema means it's either a max or a min, um, and there are no other inflection points. So, what we have here at A, A is going to be both a zero and because um, and notice it's on the x-axis and it's also a local minimum okay b since it's labeled it's not an extrema it's not a zero so this would be an inflection point i'm going to just write it like that um, c is going to be a local um, maximum so notice, and that kind of just makes sense. It's, it's curving up here. Um, this zero, so notice here, here's what I see. My graph is concave down and then it's concave up. And so this point zero, zero, since I didn't label anything else in here, this zero, zero is, an, is a zero, but, and it's also, it's not a extrema, but it is, it's an, also an inflection point. Um, so well, did I come up with the best way to describe this? No, maybe not, but I hope you're with me. This one is, not only is it a local minimum, but it is also the absolute minimum of the whole graph. Um, absolute minimum. And E, um, notice the graph doesn't change concavity again, so it's not an inflection point. This E is going to be a zero. Okay, so now, um, that was kind of my thought process behind this graph. And the other one, I, I behaved, I thought through it the same way. So now let's start, let's see if you can see both things. Um, so far you can, okay. So we wanna know where is it increasing? It's increasing on the interval from A to C. And then once again, uh, point A has an X coordinate of A. Okay, so when we do interval notation, we're always using just the X values. Um, and so it's increasing from A to C. It's also increasing again from D to infinity. Um, so I've got the bigger version that might help you. Um, it's decreasing from negative infinity to A, then it picks it up again and decreases from C to D. It's concave up um, from negative infinity to this inflection point here at B. And then it's concave down, okay, so maybe I'll write that now. It's concave down from B to zero, and then it's concave up again from zero to infinity. Wasn't it concave down? So it was up, down, up, and there we go. Local maximum, um, so we had a local max, and I was, when I wrote my answer key, I said at point C is its local max. Um, you could, if you wanted to write it as a coordinate, it's the point, um, did I call this polynomial F or, um, I did not. Let's say that I called this one F of X and I called this one G of X. Okay, if I want to label that point as a coordinate, what's happening is it's the point C comma F of C. Okay, so I'm calling it point C because there we go, but if I were, wanted to give it an X and a Y coordinate, um, the Y coordinate is F of C. Anyway, there we go. The local minimum, that was a little overly complicated. The local minimum we already labeled here, we have, um, we have points... Um, a and D are both local minimum, but this is not only is it a local minimum, it's also an absolute minimum. Um, and so point D 
You know what, this pin is really powerful. <laughs> I don't know how it's so dark, but I'm, I'm bleeding through everything. Okay, um, point D is our, um, it's our absolute minimum. So where, oh, so type and location, the location would be when X is equal to D. Maybe the best way to say that. Inflection points, I had an inflection point at point B and at the point zero, zero. Okay, um, my roots, my zeros, my roots, my x-intercepts, we, hopefully you realize that those are all the same thing. Um, so I have a zero, so I'm, what I'm saying here is um, at the points, or it's at points A, it's at point um, E, and it's at the ordered pair, zero, zero, but maybe when it says x-intercepts, well, it's when x is equal to A, to E, or to zero. I guess I should put zero in the middle, but there we go. Um, x-intercepts, usually you would describe them as um, x-coordinates. Multiplicity, okay, so I don't know if this is new to you or not, but sometimes, um, uh, you know what, let me get, this pen is too much for me to write on the back. Let me get a piece of paper. Okay, when we start talking about multiplicity, I like to think about something like y is equal to x minus three. If I have something like that, then that means I've got a an x-intercept of three, and we're doing something like that, and it's just this lovely line. Well, so it has a zero when x equals three, but it's not doing anything very exciting. If I gave you this, y equals x minus three squared, now we're looking at a parabola that has been shifted to the right. It still only has a zero at positive three, and it, but it's looking something like this-ish. Um, and so these have the same, if I said, what's the zero of this function? It has one zero. Um, and it's at three. This has one unique zero, but it shows up twice in our equation, okay? And so the, the one, one of the ways that we can say that is that it has a, um, in my IB class, we call that a repeated root. So it's the root three, um, but it's repeated in the equation. Um, notice these equations are not the same. These graphs are not the same. The other thing we can say is that we have a zero of three with a multiplicity of two. Okay, um, had I changed this equation to x minus three to the fourth power, it would look very similar. It would be steeper perhaps, but it would still bounce here at this point. Okay, so what we're gonna find is that an even multiplicity, um, the multiplicity tells us what exponent we raise it to. Even multiplicity is, um, we have historically said that it bounces. Um, and we'll keep talking about that in a second. And odd, if it's a multiplicity of this, by the way, is a multiplicity of one. Um, we would say that the multi when it's a multiplicity of one, it just passes through that point. If it is um, an odd multiplicity, x minus three cubed, um, so once again, this still only has three as my zero, but now we are doing something like this. And so I would call this, um, so this one I would call a bounce. This one I would say it passes through. Um, this one I would say it, it's a, it bends there. At that, um, at that value with a multiplicity. It's an odd multiplicity greater than one. Um, I think, do they call it a wiggle in the Algebra 2 classes at my school? I don't know, if you could say wiggle, that's fine. I, I get what you're talking about. Um, and so that's what we're talking about when we look at the multiplicity of these zeros. So coming back here, what we see on this problem, can you see everything? I think you can. Um, is that we have a multi, that this point A, it's bouncing here at A. And so A, A has a multiplicity. Well, well, it's definitely, it has an even multiplicity. We don't necessarily know if it's two or four or six or eight, but what we're going to do is we're going to assume the smallest unless they tell us otherwise. Okay, so let's keep it simple until they give us more information. Um, so I'm gonna say it has a multiplicity of two. I know for absolute, fact that it's an even multiplicity um it could be four but they would kind of have to tell us four if they wanted it to be four um and then you could say multiplicity of all the zeros well then the other two just have a multiplicity of one because it's passing through those points i'm too lazy to write that okay so the next thing does it have a positive or negative leading coefficient well notice we we see what its in behavior is doing as it as it goes off to positive so let's let me say that again as x goes to positive infinity, as my graph, as my x values are increasing and increasing, what are my y values doing? Well, they're going up. And so that tells me that my positive, excuse me, that tells me my leading coefficient is positive. Okay? 
Um, and then is it an even or is it an odd degree? Well, since they're both doing the same thing, it's going to be even. Um, you could think back to our multiplicity graph. Notice when we have an x squared, they're doing the same thing. Notice when we have an x cubed. Or likewise, this could be x to the fifth or whatever. Um, they're doing opposite things. And so this is just a more complicated version of that. The degree of the polynomial. Well, it has to have, it has, this zero um, occurs twice. Um, and so it's, it's, this has a multiplicity of two. So we, could, we know that it's going to have, it's going to have to show up in our polynomial twice, at least. It could be four, it could be six. But like I said, let's keep it simple unless they tell us. This one will show up exactly once. This one will show up one more time. Did you see I was using two, three, four? <laughs> um, so the degree of the polynomial is going to be at least four. Um, it's four or six or some, but, but once again, keep it simple. Um, the last bit that we want to do is what we call a sign diagram. So I'm not sure if you've seen this before or not, but it is going to prove to be very helpful um, in AP Precal. We used this concept all year long. Um, and so we're going to put the zeros on the graph. Later, we'll put asymptotes on the, on the graph if we have them, but we don't. Um, and this is the x-coordinate here was a, the x-coordinate here was zero, the x-coordinate here was e. And so we're just, just describing, are my y values in these different intervals positive or negative? So it was positive before, so notice my y values are positive, my y values are still positive until I get to zero, but between zero and e, my y values are negative, and then beyond e, they're positive. Okay, um, let's have you, that was already somewhat long. Let's have you come back for part G. I'll go a little faster on G, I would imagine, because we've already kind of talked through the details. Um, but um, come back for video number two in just a minute, and I'll see you there. Like, subscribe, comment, all the things. All right, good luck. Go practice.